Hello, I've been making some progress with this amp, and you can tell I've been a little OCD about it. Uh, the original Steel String Singer number two also had this bus wire uh, assortment bundle going to and from the controls, kind of using the center channel, keeping it away from the heater wires, which are up there, so that's smart, um, and then running all that down that center. Nice coax. Uh, utilizing 3D space, it's my new thing. These wires, however, how I'm doing it is not utilizing 3D space, but it's utilizing unoccupied AC signal space. By the way, I got this layout, I just sent it over to staples.com and picked it up the same day. Got a big poster size, that's really helpful. Highly recommend it. You can go huge. Even just if you if you if you're not making an amp, go to staples.com. Not sponsored by them. Uh, make yourself a poster. Send it to your friends. I'm gonna. I tried doing my filter section a little different this time. I believe this is how Dumble did his, uh, if I recall from a few Steel String Singer builds. I don't. No, if it, basically I wanted to try it that way to see if the construction was a little bit easier. And it wasn't. It was a little more difficult, in my opinion, versus sort of the staggered approach. And that's all right. Uh, I did a lot of work over here on the, um, basically, the, the power filter section. And this is sort of the first thing I did. So if you were to ask me, you know, well, what circuit board do I focus on first? Go for the power. Don't run the final lines yet. The heater, those are pretty much going to be the last thing we do here. But working on this power filter section is probably the easiest. And plus for how I'm doing this routing all the way through, um... I needed to sort of hold these these wires down. They're, it's really uh, kind of cramped up here, and this circuit board is is holding it in place. It's not gonna fray that um, or, or you know cut into that coax. I made sure that there's not that much tension on there, but uh, there's, there's you know it's holding it in there um, for moving, which is good. Now things. This is a little bit risky because if there's any sort of feedback, all this beautiful wiring, in my opinion, it's beautiful, uh, needs to be cut and separated. So this is what I'm doing. Here is a signal, which uh, is is maybe a little sensitive. That's running on the outside of this coax, okay? So I'm keeping it away. This is going from the reverb feeding back into being mixed into the preamp. Okay, so I have the wire coming up, over, and by the way, this is not shielded on Dumble's Steel String Singer. We can follow this yellow cable, which is a yellow wire, all the way over here. So I'm going to go on the outside and then put it in the channel between these coaxes over here. So in theory, this is DC, so it's not AC, you know, generating a whole bunch of electromagnetic field. But there could be some interference. Uh, I'm separating it by including on the outside of the channel. These go directly to, um, this is basically the, the high voltage lines going into the preamp section. This, this purple one, this one, and this one. And then here is our signal. That's going to go into the mixing side of things. So that's what I'm doing to keep them separate. Um, and if you remember, if there is any electromagnetic magnetic field, the best approach of two wires coming together is perpendicular. That makes uh, or reduces a lot of the interference chance. So that's sort of what I'm thinking there. Um, for these wires, I'm bundling them together via a heat shrink. It's really hard to see in there. I am going to do this, so this amp is going to have the foot switch. Uh, some folks have been asking me about the foot switch. I usually don't recommend you hooking up the foot switch 
to say foot switch one more time. Uh, and that is mainly because that wire can act like an antenna for the reverb circuit and it could cause interference issues. And by the way, this foot switch will cut in and out the reverb. And that's, in my opinion, is sort of an outdated feature. It was pretty popular. Obviously, the Fender amps had them. I don't really know any practical use. Maybe you guys can enlighten me on my comments section on where a foot switch that controls the reverb could be useful. Um, the only thing I think of is maybe with a solo, but I would think that the solo or makes you more the rever uh, rhythm. Rhythm without reverb might be okay for funk. Um, what else? So the grounding. So there's two grounds. Each of these boards has uh, a ground. They're not tied together. So where you see ground, you will need to run a wire up to the bus bar. Same with over here um, and all the boards. I, am cha I did change from my first first amp the grounding. So this is in compliance, if you will, with how Dumble and the... Um, the tech in Japan wrote down where, basically in num letters, where these grounding points are. So I am following that true to the original, uh, based on my interpretation of those tech notes. Um, and, they, and they are logical, so they're not just fluff. So we have our, our main transformer and the, uh, the first filter section in this German color array going to the same bus, the second filter cap section over here, and then the third going, as documented, to this power uh, tube section. And basically what we're trying to do is, is reduce, if there's a high current, so this one's like high current um, ground, I just moved it over here. We're trying to separate them out physically because we don't want that high current ground noise to keep feeding back into the next filter section, which is feeding back, you know, into the sensitive preamp section. So where you see these bundles of grounds coming together and then eventually going up to the bus bar, we're sort of doing that same approach, but in this case there isn't uh, room or the PCB didn't account for that, which is fine. Uh, I think I like this way a little bit better. It guarantees all the grounds, and it's going to be less maintenance in the future if there was maintenance on this amp, that all the grounds are separated. Because um, now you have some play. If you did, for whatever reason, have to lift the circuit board up again, you could do so uh, a little bit easier. Um, what else can I talk about? All right, so here's some ground. What I did was I used some heat shrink, sort of b being over-the-top OCD about the wiring on this one. I uh, can't emphasize that enough. But what's kind of cool and what I'm looking forward to is if there's any sort of need to swap out the output transformer, I think it's going to be pretty easy because we have, here's the preamp, and here's the wire. So it's, this is very exposed and it's going to just come up here. It's going to go over the top of the um, power board. So here's one screw holding that in, and here's the other one. This one might be a little pain, but I can lift it up and sort of get at it. Here's one, and then there's one up here. So, in theory, I should be able to replace the output transformer if there's ever a need to. Relatively easy. Um, and then just run the wires accordingly, of course. What else can I talk about? Uh, one thing that's not on the diagram is this. I should add it, actually. Um, Basically, the yellow and red wire, which is the on the uh, um, tra power transformer, it's the center tap. So, kind of being inspired by modern amps, the center tap is on a one amp slow blow fuse, and I'm going to have that internal. It's very unlikely that that will fail, but if a power tube fails, or if any tube fails, or if there's a short for whatever reason, on the high um, voltage line, that slow blow resistor, uh, 
fuse is going to hopefully save the day. Here is the, um, basically this amp was made to be fixed by us originally, and here is my modification. Here's the only real modification that I've done to the circuit was make that fixed bias amp into a variable bias by putting, here's a two watt burns. It's kind of an expensive part. I think this was like 17 bucks, um, but it's two watt. It's going to be, you know, handle over handle actually. Um, cause again, I'd like to over engineer these things. I want this thing bulletproof roadworthy and all the rest, but that, you know, should be a very reliable bias pot for us. It's coming together, coming together. I'm really excited to hear this one, hopefully very soon. And, uh, and yeah, I'll share any tips and tricks along the way. But right now I'm working on the, the, the preamp section. So do this one first, work on this section, then the dry, and then finally the, the phase inverter slash driver board. Hope you guys are enjoying this. Hope you're staying safe, whatever that means.